The Prime Minister says he's puzzled that you resigned because he says that you were told that he was kicking these controversial benefit cuts for the disabled into touch. Is he right to be puzzled? Well, it's up to him whether he's puzzled or not. Uh, all I can say is that uh, when the moment came when I decided to resign, uh, what I saw was a, was a mess, really, with policy, it appears, being made on the hoof. Uh, in the sense, <coughs> in response to media interrogation, the policy was shifting. I wasn't actually consulted on that at all. On the so it was your policy, but you weren't even consulted on Well, I wasn't consulted on whatever changes there were. I had actually argued that that from the beginning we shouldn't have implemented uh, the, the consultation uh, response before the budget. We should have abandoned that process. We should have waited till after the budget. We should have then had a wider debate about where welfare goes with disabilities and local social care and health care. That would all have allowed us to negotiate and discuss properly with the charities and the various institutions, instead of which it was tied to the budget by a rather crass briefing on the Friday before the budget for Saturday, which then said welfare cuts pave the way for tax cuts, which has appalled me. You mm. have implied that you thought about resigning earlier. When was that and why? The tax credit stuff, which I was concerned about, um, and hugely concerned about the attack really on universal credit, taking away of the work allowances, uh, and then the astonishing attack on the tapers, which I had to fight. And at that stage, to be honest with you, I really generally thought about going, uh, because I'd become to feel rather semi-detached about all of this, and that's the problem. I didn't feel like I was actually having an influence, and this was really, for me, the final straw. How did you feel when you learned mm -hmm. that there were going to be these middle-class tax cuts in the budget? On Wednesday, I sat in silence at the, uh, at the, bu at the um, uh, Cabinet meeting, uh, because it was dawning on me uh, strongly that this was probably unsustainable. Uh, sat in science because there was no way the budget was going to be changed at this particular point. Loads of people have said to me that they see it as <coughs> profoundly unfair that there should have been significant cuts in disability benefit payments at the same time as <coughs> tax reductions are being given to the middle classes. Are they right that that combination is unfair? Well, the problem is that this whole business about the disability reform should not have been part of the budget. That is the point that I was making, and that's what I tried to establish early. We had a consultation. We needed more time. We wanted to talk more to those who had actually put in some uh, comments. And uh, rushing it for the but budget... But that fairness issue. Well, that's what I'm saying. Rushing it to the budget immediately links it to the budget. And then, of course, you're in that argument. And of course, it's not fair. Absolutely not fair. And therefore, if you find you are profoundly in disagreement with, in this case, a, a process, a, a, a breaking of the, uh, of the fairness of the years, sort of social justice, if I felt this was happening and we were being casual about this, I, I, I felt that I could no longer affect it inside. And therefore, my reluctant decision is that I have to come outside to argue yet again with the Centre for Social Justice that there's a better way to do this. And, and therefore, in your view, the welfare cap, this limit on the budget of your former department, it should go? I, I'm not sure what purpose it serves, because the negotiations and discussions about finance and money take place anyway. All this does is gives, what I think, Treasury an opportunity to say, we can't discuss that because you're above the welfare cap. Go away and get me the money. And instead of actually discussing properly what the issues are in the longer term, it tends to narrow the argument rather than allow it to be broader. So I have privately said I think it has changed the terms of the debate, and lowering it made it really, really difficult. Now, Downing Street and indeed uh, one of your former colleagues, Ros Altman, have alleged that this has nothing to do with your concerns about welfare reform and everything to do with your passionate opposition to us remaining in the European Union, in stark opposition to the position of the Prime Minister. Yep. Uh, and that what you're trying to do is destabilise the Prime Minister to win the European debate. Well, you know, that's a pretty Machiavellian view about it. I have to tell you, if I was that clever and intelligent and uh, Machiavellian, I would be incredibly proud of an assertion that is completely wrong. Uh, my resignation note was straightforward. It was about my concern that a party that I love, that I serve, and a country that I really care about, with my background in setting up the Centre for Social Justice and worrying about how we get those who are beyond work and those who need help to be able to do the things they need to do, 
That is my driving passion. It is what I am about. It's why I came into government, social justice in the Conservative Party in a conservative way, to make us that one nation party. This is about my absolute care for what I think is being lost in the drive to get narrower and narrower about a savings issue. And I sense is that we lose the concept of people and we start to think only in pounds. Just to be clear that I understand, your fundamental argument with the Chancellor is that you feel it's really important to reform the welfare system to help poor people escape poverty, but you feel you are subject to too much financial pressure to make short-term savings. Yet my argument is that in the chase for the saving us from the deficit, which is exactly right, we do need to cut the deficit, the problem is we have narrowed the nature of where we go for that to such an extent that even after all the changes we made in reforms, we've got to the stage where we're repeating the demand on the same people again and again, and that is working age welfare. And so my concern has been, and my argument, that we can't go on doing it like this because this becomes unfair. And if it's unfair, both in reality, it becomes unfair in perception. So you're basically saying it's simply not fair that you have to make short-term savings in the payments that are made to people of working age? It's not fair to make savings on the backs of the same people again and again and again, uh, simply because we are unable to go elsewhere to look for this, and there isn't a balance, I think, across government about how this is best done. And that is my concern, uh, because these people who we're saving from really do need their lives changed, and the only way to do that is through reform. Um, and if <coughs> you have such a fundamental disagreement over, frankly, the most important policy, some would say, on the sort of economic and social side, is George Osborne fit to remain Chancellor? Yeah, I'm not in, you see, here today I'm not here really to comment about individuals. I recognise the question you've asked me. My view about this is, it's about persuading George Osborne, it's about persuading the Prime Minister, it's about persuading the party to just pause and think. You know, this was not, doesn't fit the narrative that we were told that we are a party of one nation and social justice. We need to broaden out the way we help sort the deficit out. Uh, finally, resignation conversations <clears throat> are never easy. Um, it's been reported that your conversation with the Prime Minister was pretty <clears throat> fractious, that he accused you of behaving dishonourably. Uh, indeed, it's been reported he called you a shit. Um, is that right? There were two people in that conversation. I was aware that there was nobody else. And all I know is that some people that seem to be wandering around telling us that they know what was in that conversation. Well, I have to tell you, there were two people in that conversation. It was a private conversation. You're not going to tell us what was in the conversation? Not at all, because I think these are private conversations.